Seguimos en el World Business Forum, nos acompaña Mitchell Wise. Mitchell es profesor en Harvard Business School. Es un referente en innovación e inteligencia artificial generativa. Ha trabajado con líderes del sector público y privado y les ayuda a entender cómo integrar esta tecnología en sus organizaciones. Su trabajo se enfoca en la innovación y la resolución de problemas y tiene dos libros, We the Possibility Harnessing Public Entrepreneurship to Solve Our Most Urgent Problems. Mitchell, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mitchell, in your course at Harvard, students practice solving real world problems using generative AI. What steps should we follow to ensure AI produces coherent, creative, and actionable proposals? Well, we should ground the AI in some of the real knowledge that we have about the problems that we think we're facing. So you can ask the AI for help on problems in the world, but you may be better if you say, these are things I already tried, these are the policies and programs our organization already uses. So grounding it in the knowledge base that you already have um, can help. In addition, being an a interlocutive prompter, of going back and forth with the AI, really telling it, look here, not here, do this, more of that, really treating it as a multi-stage iterative process of prompting, I would say, secondly. And thirdly, always still using the judgment that you have. Um, you know, I, I like to say, like, yes, use your AI tools, but use the tool on top of your neck, using your own judgment still. You cannot outsource entirely all the creativity and, and problem solving to the AI. You and the AI are working together. Mitchell, you've mentioned before that many institutions need to move from saying we can't to we could try. What are the most common cultural or the structural barriers to this shift, and how can AI help overcome them? I mean, the most common barrier to try new things is, I think it's a human barrier. It's we're wired, basically, for the status quo. Our brains can be afraid of us doing new things, and, and that, that manifests across the organization. There are ways of overcoming that uh, organizationally um, and through great leadership. One of the things I uh, always suggest great leaders do is, when it's true, remind people that the status quo is actually the more dangerous choice, that if we don't move, competitors will. If we don't solve problems, those problems don't go away. One of the things I find really exciting these days about it is it can help us prototype change. We can all, we're all coders now. We can, we can all software engineers. We all make technology. And so I've, I've written and said that basically there's this old phrase a lot of us have maybe muttered after a boring meeting, like, oh, this meeting could have been an email. I love to say with all these new tools, this meeting could have been a prototype. Somebody could have already built at least a clickable prototype, if not some version of the technology that we might be talking about that is on our pathway to change and brought it into the meeting so that we're not talking about amorphous change, um, abstract change that just gets everybody afraid. We can actually put our fingers on a tool, talk about how to make it better. I think AI and its ability to help us prototype, might, that might be one of the neatest ways it helps us work our way through change. And speaking of organizations, uh, Mitchell, how can leaders foster environments where innovative ideas can emerge, be tested, and scale? There's lots leaders can do to do that. One of the things is to lead by example there. I think there are some early papers coming out, not mine, that show when leaders use AI, their teams are more likely to use it. I think when they use it well, their teams will be more likely to use it well. I think if they uh, show their vulnerabilities with it, here's what I tried, it didn't work. People are likely to feel like they can say, here's what I tried and didn't work. If they invite uh, leaders do the ingenuity from their teams about new ways of using it, people will feel safe suggesting what they are. So I think the leader has a real tone setting job, but also they need to lead by example. I use, I try, I make mistakes, I make it better. With AI, I think that's, it's always been important. I think with AI, that's going to be wildly important still. Mitchell, there, there is a lot of concern now with the ethics uh, of uh, AI use. What criteria would you suggest for organizations and individuals to use it responsibly? My wife is a psychologist, and she's always coaching people to live according to their own values. And so I suppose one place of starting is, you know, use AI in ways that accord with your own values. If your organization use the AI in ways that accord with, her own, with your own values, I, I can't say that I are, it's easy to, it's going to be easy to navigate this, but I think having some core values is super important. Finally, we have a, I guess, interviewer who's going to generate a question for you. Do you think we are preparing leaders who are ready to combine ethical, technological, and entrepreneurial thinking? And what skills do you believe are most urgently needed in this new environment? I believe we're making progress, but not fast enough. 
Too often leadership training focuses on either innovation or ethics, rarely both. The most urgent skills, in my view, are ethical decision-making, adaptability to emerging technologies, and the courage to take smart risks. We need leaders who can question systems, understand the impact of technology, and build ventures that serve the common good. What do you think, Mitchell? Very good question. <laughs> I guess it's a good question. I guess it's, I'm not sure uh, what to make of the, AI, uh, the AI's opinion about AI there. Um, I do think that this balance of innovation and prudence is going to be the key leadership trait going forward. Um, uh, leaders, I like to say, are going to be making lots of decisions about how they and their organizations shouldn't and should use AI. But first, they have to know how they could and couldn't use AI. I would say the skill set to balance innovation and prudence all at once but also, honestly, an AI skill set, you have to be able to put fingers on keys. You can't be a leader these days who is asked to weigh in on what this means for our firm or our company, and, and you don't actually know what it can do lately or what it can't. Okay, Michel, thank you. Thank you, Ana. Pleasure having you. Thank you. Ustedes, muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Sigan pendientes del contenido que se está generando desde World Business Forum aquí en Medellín.